Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, I welcome you all on behalf of Jyotiridya Prasamstha. So uh, today uh, with me here is uh, Professor P.K. Ganekar and today we will be having lecture about the lunar meteoritic crater. So last week you might have seen WhatsApp uh, uh, videos or photos etc uh, regarding uh, pink lunar lake and so we s just thought that uh, we will have uh, two lecture series uh, regarding lunar. So uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Ganekar. So Professor Ganekar uh, is uh, a botany professor basically and he was working at uh, Abbasab Garware College. He retired uh, from Abbasab Garware College as the head of botany department and uh, he is enthusiastic about many subjects like uh, astronomy, history. So he has done many tracks and he has published many books uh, regarding traveling and uh, especially uh, forts in Maharashtra. Uh, so today, uh, uh, read, sorry, hear from uh, Professor Ganekar. So, sir, yeah, we can start. Yeah, surely. Good evening, everybody. Now, today I have come over here to discuss some points about the lunar crater. Uh, An uninvited uh, visitor from outer space landed at this particular place in remote past say five lakh years before. A small village is there which is uh, known as Lonar. So we call this particular meteoritic crater lake as Lonar crater and Lonar lake. Uh, okay. And you can see the aerial photograph which is uh, photographed by Mangesh Dige and it shows the crater nature of the area. In the background, you can see the Lonar village and on the left side of this big lake or big crater, there is a small crater called as Amban in this. Now this particular Lonar lake is viewed from the top, that is, is the aerial view. And this particular lunar is uh, formed by the meteor. Now we must understand few words and the meanings of them. Now you can see I think you, you can see all these things. Three words which is meteoride, a meteorite and a meteor. Meteoride are the rocks in space. They are quite away from earth. While a meteorite is, if such a rock is attracted by the gravitational force of earth, it rushes to earth and when it enters the atmosphere because of the tremendous velocity it starts burning we call that as a meteor well if at all this meteor doesn't burn completely and it comes to the earth's crust or surface of earth we call it as meteorite so there should not be any misconception about any of this term. I will be using some of these words very often. So I explained all these words. The rock in space is meteorite. The fragment which reaches earth is a meteorite. And the falling star is called as a meteor. Here you can see two craters. Such two types of craters exist on earth 
or even on other planets. One is called as a volcanic crater, which is on the left side. And on the right side, you can see a meteoric or meteoritic crater. The volcanic crater is also circular. Meteoritic crater is circular. The difference is in its origin or in the formation. If a volcano erupts, slowly it cools down and it leaves a circular scar on the earth elevated on a conical top and that we call as a volcanic crater. The meteoritic crater is because of the hyper velocity impact of a meteor and it is formed on the surface of the earth. It is not on the top of a conical hill. We call that as a meteoritic crater. Here the volcanic crater depicted is from Mexico and the Badger crater or Arizona crater as it is called. It is in uh, Arizona state. It is in USA. So these are two different types of craters which we can see on earth. Now here is again the view of the lunar lake and lunar crater. The lake inside is called as a Panchapsar Sarovar or simply called as lunar lake. And the big round thing you can see that is the lunar crater. The phenomena which have puzzled lot many people is this particular lake inside the crater contains lot many microbes or we also call them as cyanobacteria and because of that the water in the lake is also always green but few days back for the things unknown till now the color of the water has been changed instead of green it has become pinkish or slightly reddish and everybody started talking about how and why this particular the lake water is occurring many theories have been put forward but still it is an enigma scientists are uh, try, taking their efforts to phenomena now this is some information about the lunar crater uh, the first is the location. It is in Maharashtra. It is in Vidarbha area, the Buldana district. And the latitude and longitude are there. The southern part of Buldana district is having two rivers. There are two river basins or two river systems. One is Penaganda river, it is to the north and Purana river on the south. The area in between is the southern part of Bulgana district. As far as the distances are concerned, from Mumbai, it is 553 kilometers. From Pune, it is 401 kilometers. From Aurangabad, it is 141 kilometers. This town is 98 kilometers away from Lunar. While the district headquarter of Bulgana, it is 80 kilometers. Mekar is one of the big towns in the surrounding area. It is hardly 35 kilometers from Lunar. So these are this is the information about some distances from the famous places. Now, the lunar crater is a thing which is visited by many. And they should have some basic information about the meteorite which came over here long time back. The meteorite impact was from the east at a high angle of 30 degrees and is speculated by scientists. The meteor might be say about 55 kilometers, 55 meters in size. 
the weight is speculated to be 20 lakh tons and the speed at which that meteor came was around about 25 kilometers per second. So this involved a tremendous explosion in that area and it is uh, said that about 6 megatons bomb if it explodes that much amount of energy would have been uh, released in this particular impact. Few more things about the crater. The circular depression which is formed by this impact is about 1.8 kilometers the diameter of that particular crater is 1.8 kilometers. The rim radius of the crater is uh, 20 meters from surrounding. I will explain this what, what this is. The rim, the circular boundary, it is elevated by about 20 meters from the surrounding area. The total depth of this crater is about 65 meters. While the lake which is inside the crater, it is 5 to 7 meters deep that is the water column is only that much. When the meteor collided, much material was released out, it was ejected out and it is spread over a radius of about 1 to 2 kilometers around the entire crater on all sides. Now, this particular Luna crater is an attraction for many many branches of science and some social sciences. The first is geology because the meteor is made up of some rocky material so geologists are interested in it. The science which is on the boundary of geology and geography is geomorphology. Externally, how we see the cr crust of the earth or the surface of the earth, that is geomorphology. Archaeology. Many archaeologists have worked over lunar and some materials which dates back to few thousand years is observed over here. Some beads were there, some glass beads were there. Some excavations were done by archaeologists and they have got many many, many proofs as regards the archaeology is concerned. Historically, this place Luna is very important because the Yadav kings, they used to visit Luna quite many times. Temple architecture is an, a, a different branch which is not a science, but table architecture is very worth considering over here. Inside the crater, say we can say crater floor, there are about eight temples built during Yadava's dynasty, that is 12th to 13th century. Henry Cousins, he took notice of all these tables for the first time and there is still one more table very beautifully carved and it is table of Daitya Sudan. So temple are from uh, the point of view of temple architecture, Lona attracts many people. Iconography, it is Murti Shastra as we call it. On all these temples they have different icons and their study, iconography, it is a heritage site and naturally people who consider heritage as their study, they have a tremendous interest in Lonani crater. Few years back, this area was declared as a sanctuary. So naturally, the flora means the plants, the vegetation, Fauna, that is the animals, 
And the third very important aspect of this sanctuary is a microbial life which exists in the lake water. So, if we consider sanctuary as such, then these three aspects, they are very important. So, water has come over here to study the floral elements. Different zoologists visit this area for the faunal aspect. And microbiologists come over here to consider the microbial life over here in the water lake. Chemistry. Water is not simple H2O. What the details of it we are going to consider afterwards. So chemistry people they are also interested in this. As it is a unique place, some tourists come over here. MDDC is having where their bungalows over here. So tourism is another aspect. And mythology is another aspect. Of course, we can add add to this list number number of branches. But these are prominent things which are uh, very important. Now one word. I am going to explain a bit and that is masculinite. Masculinite is a unique thing which is located only where there is hypervelocity impact. It is not observed in volcanic craters. When a basaltic rock is subjected to tremendous heat then the feldspars in it, they convert into masculinite. The presence of masculinite in lunar confirms it is a hypervelocity impact origin and it is not volcanic in origin. If this masculinite was not observed, then there could have been a possibility that this is not a hypervelocity impact crater, it can be a volcanic crater. Now here is a rough diagram which is an assemblage of two diagrams. The upper part depicts something else, the lower part depicts something else. Now this astroblem is shown in both phases or both sections, vertical section as well as the transverse section. If we see this crater from the aerial point of view, then the lower part of it will be seen. But if we hypothetically cut the thing vertically, then we can see many facets of this crater. The central part of it, which is limited by the dotted line, it is the water body or the lake, Panchapsar Sarovar as we call it. The area to the upper side of it is shown by some lines and long time back, say about 10 years, 15 years before, that was agricultural land at the floor of the crater. Now, the area which surrounds this lake is the crater slope. The crater slope and the lake, they have a junction or a common point, the flat area. We can call that as a crater floor, in which, in the still more depression, that water lake is there. Then this, the rim, the external boundary of the crater is called the rim of the lake. It is elevated by about 30 meters from the ground level of the lunar area, lunar village area. I, I just made, made a mention about the ejecta blanket. The ejecta blanket is the material which is blown out of the crater when it was formed. And uh, the peripheral portion is the ground level. So this is how the lunar lake is to be studied. Now, as it is geologically, geomorphologically, geographically, very important thing. It is represented in a 10 digit geocode. Here, the number reads as 3, 1, 1, 1, 13, 1, 1, 1, 1. 
it is just like our pin code the pin code suppose if it is pune the pin code can be 411030 this four depicts the is the area the western part of the indian peninsula one one represents the districts in that area while last three digits they explain that the proper post office in the area like that this 10 digit geo code the first null uh, digit and now it is always red from left to right three it depicts the indian peninsula the first number one it tells about the outstanding universal value of it its uniqueness if it was not universally important then the number would not be one it can be two three four etc the second number one that is the third digit over here tells about the scientific or intrinsic value of that day. Please. If it is scientifically not important, the number will be something. The digit will be something else. But as it is scientifically very intrinsic, the number one is given for that. Then the fourth digit one it represents whether it is having some tourist value or not. Now, as this is. A tourist place number one is written over here. Then the next two digits, that is one and three, that is thirteen. IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, they have many teams, and they have said that it is in their list number thirteen because it is a meteor impact. So this thirteen number. it represents it is a meteor impact the next number one is whether the place is easily accessible or whether it is very difficult to go over there their gradation is there so this is number one it shows it is easily accessible highly accessible accessibility is no problem over here then the next digit again is one and it is uh, the uh, the the state maharashtra state in this case they have declared this as a wildlife sanctuary secondly jia they have declared that as a geo geological monument and very recently the area around the crater say about Hundred meters from the rim, it has been declared as eco-sensitive zone. So this particular place, geologically important, wildlife is very important over here, and eco-sensitivity. So the number one is given over there. Now, do we have any potential threats for this natural wonder? but as this area is declared as eco sensitive zone and a wildlife sanctuary there is least potential threat so it is number 1 number 1 is given for that and this is a geomorpho spot so geomorphologically a great diversity is there so it is again number 1 so this 311 13 11 11 this 10 digit geo code is very important if you want to search for this lona and if you know this geo code you can get information very easily now this particular crater as i explained the regions of this crater the slope now the spring draining water to the crater floor is the slope now 3 to 5 different springs which are perennial and they drain water constantly 24 by 7 in this lunar lake the biggest of it is called as dhara 
और भोगावती अबाउट फोर्टी फाइव सेंटीमीटर थिक जेट ऑफ स्वीट वॉटर दैट इज पॉटेबल वॉटर कम्स आउट ऑफकोर्स विद स्पीड एंड दैट वॉटर अल्टीमेटली गोज टू द लेक देर इज स्टिल वन मोर पेरेनियल स्प्रिंग विच इज कॉल्ड ए सीता नाणी वॉटर इज पॉटेबल यू कैन ड्रिंक इट एंड टिल टू थ्री इयर्स बिफोर देर वॉज अनदर पेरेनियल स्प्रिंग विच वॉज नियर राम गया मंदिर और फॉरेस्ट नर्सरी बट नाउ इट हेज ड्राई रीजन्स आई एम नॉट आई एम नॉट वेस्टिंग माई टाइम इन एक्सप्लेनिंग वाई इट हेज नाउ देर आर सम मॉन्सून टेम्पररी स्प्रिंग्स which flow from rim to the floor but they are not perennial they are just ephemeral only during monsoons the water comes through these springs and the slope of the crater is covered with small trees and bushy vegetation which is this of deciduous type the importance of this particular vegetation is they don't allow the soil to erode inside the lake points erosion of the soil in the lake now let us go to the crater basin or the floor of the crater now we can uh, in in the diagram i will show all these things again now there is a path which is a bit elevated on the northeast of this uh, <coughs> crater and this uh, crater floor is having a small strip on which you can walk on one side you will have the crater lake on the other side you will have the crater slope the lake water it is super saline alkaline water body with a ph of about 10.5 i am going to explain this point afterwards but it is very very salty water and its ph is 10.5 what that ph means i will explain it afterwards and there is a old pakka uh, well along the right of the floor of the southern age near kamalja devi mandir and that water is also potable but Uh, before say 20 years we the water level in the crater increased and this uh, well it uh, submerged so water is now now potable even if it is now exposed again now one interesting thing you can uh, test if you take a small pit if you dug a small pit anywhere in the basin a little away from the saline lake and wait for about an half an hour or an hour water accumulates in that pit and that is sweet and potable water because their ph of it is 7 the sip the saline water in the lake is very alkaline but if you dug a pit and wait for about an hour water collects in that uh, small pit so the shallow lake is having only 5 to 7 meters depth water percolates through that soil and it comes in that small pit chemically this water has been analyzed by many scientists now you just have a look to this and the importance of this water analysis from the chemical point of view you can see that in 1910 christie he analyzed this water for the first time and he got the results which are tabulated over here the thing is uh analyzed from a water sample which was taken from a depth of about 2 feet 
more than a half meter from that link. Then in 1958, Jingran and Rao, they took a sample, say about two meters depth of from that link. And Tisco in 1960, they analyzed water samples, say about uh, six meters, say about 18 feet deep from the link. You can, if you just look at this tabular form again. You will come to know that the sodium chloride, sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate, they are the main constituent of this water or sodium chloride, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, they are dissolved on a very large scale. Now in the left hand corner, you will be observing a strip in the right hand of the person. A color code in his left hand. Now this is a small strip just like litmus. If you take litmus paper and dip it in uh, acidic medium, it turns pink. If you dip it in saline basic material, basic solution, it turns uh, color and it becomes uh, bluish. But this pH paper, it shows exactly what is the pH of if you color, if you compare the colors on the strip and of the paper, pH paper, it is around about 10 or 10.5. Now this is a broad range pH paper. Some narrow range pH papers are also available. So you can decide whether it is 10.5. You can accurately measure pH. Nowadays the electronic sensors are there. You can measure it. But this is a very simple method. And so, if the water is having 7 pH, it is potable. Beyond that, uh, 6 to 8, still that, you, you are not supposed to drink it. It is not good for our health. So, this is 10.5, very high pH. Means, uh, this sodium chloride, sodium uh, bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, they are tremendous in the water. So, it becomes a very super saline solution. Another important thing from chemical point of view is the silt because water is taking particles of soil, they are getting deposited in the lake and that silt is of four types in this loda. It is black colloidal silt, it can be brown plastic silt, it can be brown less plastic silt or it can be brown to grey weathered rock. Now this is very important if you want to study the sample of water and sample of the silt chemically. And this silt it uh, is having three major properties. There is a lot of moisture in the silt. It is having considerable percentage of silicon dioxide and presence of Fe2O3, Al2O3 and CaO, it is in varied percentages, iron uh, oxide it is 37 to 42 percent, aluminium oxide 9 to 12 percent and calcium oxide 8 to 11 percent. So this is the chemical background of this water. Now. If you want to study lunar, not from the geologist's point of view, not from astronomical point of view, but from the ecosystem's point of view, environmental point of view, you can see different ecosystems or it is an assemblage of many types of ecosystems. The area which surrounds even the ejecta blanket surrounding area that will have a totally altogether different type of flora, different type of fauna, different type of the silt or water depositions. The ejecta blanket though it is very deformed at lunar, lot of encroachments are there, even the lunar village is on this ejecta blanket but that forms an ecosystem. 
Now, during the monsoons, some springs come down to the lake and there are uh, some monsoon uh, ephemeral springs in addition to the of them, they will have different ecosystems. At the crater floor, you can see the delta region which was uh, under irrigation say about 10 years before agricultural land it was. So the delta is having altogether different type of ecosystem. While except delta, the, the, the rim floor is having different type of ecosystem. I am not going into details of it, but such ecosystems exist at Lonar, where there is a confluence of freshwater spring and saline water, that brackish water, we will have still another type of ecosystem over there. Lonar Lake Silts, they have different ecosystems. The super saline alkaline lake, about which I am going to talk a bit more, that is a totally different type of ecosystem. And the brim of lake is another ecosystem. So only at Lonar you can get 8 to 10 different ecosystems living in the same area. Everything is different. Their physical nature, their chemical nature, their floral, faunal elements, all these differ. So it is an assemblage of variety of ecosystems. I have studied this ecosystem, particularly the saline water. I have visited Lonar. 15, 16 times. Uh, sometimes I have brought the water samples from the lake. I analyzed it in my college. Different micro different type of blue in that water. Nowadays, people don't call blue green algae. They call it as the cyanobacteria. If except the chlorella, which is uh, listed over here, on the second place, that is a green alga. All others, they are cyanobacteria or blue green alga. The dimorphococcus, the ankystrodesmus, the clostridium, oscillatoria, crina, pandorina, synodesmus, pediastrum, orthospora, cosmarium, cylindrosperma, all these are blue green algae. So, because of that green alga chlorella, and because of all these, particularly, I should mention spirulina. Spirulina is uh, just like a uh, coil of a spring. And that is very important. Uh, it is very rich in protein. And the SCP, single cell protein, it is about 65. So if you take 100 grams of spirulina, 65 grams will be proteins and it is human digestible so it is very important and many bird migrating have this spirulina so this is the microbiology few years back now many scientists uh, have analyzed the water sample again and again uh, have analyzed the water sample again and again they got some different results I will talk about it uh, after about a minute now, this spirulina, which I emphasized a bit, looks like this under the microscope. If you uh, in the, only under microscope, you can see the spring like coil structure, and that is spirulina. Now, other scientists they have uh, noted some alkylophilic bacteria because this is basic or alkaline uh, water, some bacillus. Staphylococcus, Arthrobacter, Micrococcus, Pseudomonas are reported by many microbiologists. Some microbiologists have analyzed the samples and some Methanotropus bacteria are recently discovered. That is they eat methane from the surrounding. So it can be a boon in the future. NCCS from Pune there is resistance for radiations, which shows uh, resistance for radiations. And Agarka Research Institute, again from Pune, they have Halomonas capicillis, and that is uh, a raw material for making productions. 
so it can be another boon in future this is uh, lodar crater uh, it is a very rough sketch and you can see very many things put all together now there are four watch towers in four corners if you climb up and stand on the watch tower you can get a, a very beautiful view of the crater the crater floor the vegetation of the crater slopes the rim of the crater the ejecta blanket all these things you can see from the watch towers now here to the northern side i have written there or there steps now these steps they if you just climb down you can reach that delta region of the crater floor it is dhara mandir near to the inlet or it, it is acts as inlet for water in the lake now there are many temples over there and there is another uh, spring which is sita nani shown on the right hand side then another food path just next notice over there the dotted line and on the right hand side is mtdc so that is the nearest approach to the crater floor then there are some temples named differently shankar ganesh temple ram gaya temple vag mahadev temple mor mahadev temple all these temples are very important because they have altogether different ecosystem of the bats over there so uh, the the temples are not live that is they uh, nobody goes there and worships so these are the uh, temples from the 12th or 13th century and some of these temples show magnetic that is another interesting topic then right hand watch tower uh, lower uh, corner there is again a footpath which is very recently created and that has disturbed the ecosystem over there the importance of the of the slope was lost because there were many birds an eagle was nesting there for about 20 years that tree has fallen down and now that eagle can you cannot see over there the deep mar and it is having many holes inside you can if you go over there wait there for about 5 5 to 10 minutes you can see parakeets the rose ring parakeets they have inhabit in that particular deep mar now i have seen a monitor lizard near this kamaja temple and there is a well i mentioned it a pakka well now that is the potable water available near kamaja devi mandir then there are ambarkhana mahadev mandir mongla mahadev mandir and chopra mahadev mandir on the western side of this particular lake so this is about crater and different parts uh, different places worth observing over there now you can see the kamalja mandir you can see a flag just on the bank of that uh, water and that is deep mar where these parakeets they live now more mahadev mandir vagda mahadev mandir ram gaya mandir ram gaya mandir is a ram mandir and rest of them they are the mahadev temples so from Uh, temple architecture and iconography these temples are very important dhara mandir you can see over here now there is daitya sudan mandir which is in lonar village now the left hand on the left hand side you can see the temple which is very beautifully to 12th or 13th century and uh, it is one of the well preserved temples in maharashtra platform and on that platform the the main temple is erected there are three mukha mandaps or porches and the deity which is worshiped inside is you can see in the center and the beautiful carvings on the temple you can see uh, in the rest of the uh, pictures now i'll come to the zoological part of it the zoological survey of india they have published a good account of the fauna of this particular crater fauna 
of lunar crater. Now this lunar crater is having so many types of animals over there. Now the table, it, the, uh, it gives the groups of the animals which are recorded over here. Instead of having uh, the discussion about entire table, I abridged it a bit and the mammalia, the, the animals which have mammary glands. 12 such animals are found. The Anuman langur, the black buck, rats, squirrels, civets, all these types of mammals, 12 different types, they are re reported by different scientists, different types. But uh, that is one of the very important aspect of Lona. Mammals, after that, the aves, that is the birds. 160 types of birds have been recorded by ornithologists over there. They include the peacocks, the national bird of India, the flamingos, the brahmi kites and so many different birds are there. 160 different types of birds, some migratory, some local. Reptilia, the reptiles, the snakes, the monitor lizard, the geckos, reptiles have been reported from this place. The amphibia or the amphibians. Uh, we know the frogs and all these are amphibians. Seven different types of amphibians have been recorded over here. Molux, it is an aquatic animal and it can be either fresh water or salt water. It is having a kind of a protective shell. We call it mollusk. Then rotifers, ostracoda, chilopoda, these are, we are not well versed with these types of animals. I will just neglect them. But arachnids, 23 types of arachnids are seen. The scorpions and spiders, they are the major components of arachnida. Then hymenoptera, etc., the insects, 17 different types of ants are there. And odonata, that is the damselfly or the moths, they are included in odonata. Then lepidoptera, 